While we all share the same ranked grind every season, we all have those specific things holding us back from reaching our dream rank by the end of each split. While every player in a specific rank will never fit into the same exact mold, there are common playstyles, strengths, and weaknesses that tend to be common among each rank. What's going on guys, my name is Valued, and by the end of this video, you're gonna have some solid tips to set you up to rank up in split two. Whether you're stuck in bronze or diamond, this'll be a good one. So buckle on in. And speaking of bronze, where better to start than from the beginning? Most players in this rank need to just work strictly on the fundamentals of the game. While each player is gonna have their own weaknesses, if you find yourself struggling to get out of bronze or any rank for that matter, the firing range is your best friend. At this stage in your progression as a player, each minute in the firing range will give you 10 times the returns, and that's not an understatement. Often, players in the lower ranks have a hard time improving in the heat of the live matches. It can be tough for a player to perform well in a high stress environment and also be able to identify what goes wrong when they don't exactly know. The reasoning for this is they're still uncomfortable with the core fundamentals of their game. And as a result, they tend to have a harder time taking valuable things away from their losses and learning from every game. Trust me guys, everyone knows very well, it's easy to just hop on Apex, play a couple games, hot drop and die, and then hop off. This could be a great time, and if this is how you enjoy playing the game, more power to you. But if you want to improve, you have to be honest with yourself and put a focus on the areas that need improvement. At this stage in your journey, it's likely every area, and that's okay. Rather than hopping right into a game when you log on, take 15 minutes and practice some weapons. You should be able to pretty comfortably one-clip a dummy with every weapon in the game, so make sure that's your focus each time you pick up these guns. And guys, just practice. We could make an entire video about how to escape bronze because honestly, when you're there, it means that you're newer to the game, so there's a lot of things to work on. Focus on the biggest things that you're struggling with, watch our videos, and take away the key things that you notice in your own gameplay, and I promise guys, you will see meaningful improvement. So silver is similar to bronze, but if you're looking to climb to gold, there are some pretty key differences that you should keep in mind. A lot of players here still have big holes in their gameplay from a mechanical perspective. So don't let your mechanical practice slow down. If you're consistently landing your shots, using movement well to avoid damage and use cover, and have a good understanding of your legend, you're already gonna have a good time in silver. This is where you should shore up your knowledge, making sure you have a good understanding of every legend in the game. However, what's really gonna help is having a good early game plan. So as we probably all know, in bronze and silver matches, most games, half of the lobby will drop to literally two or three POIs. Understanding what drop locations are gonna be highly contested and finding safe locations for your team to get off to a good start is one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give to any player in this elo. Silver's where you start losing RP when you enter matches. So if you're dying off drop regularly, you're gonna keep yourself from ranking up. If you were recently bronze, you could play enough games just to hit silver no matter what. But here in silver, you've gotta start playing to win. Instead of looking for those early kills, instead, look to survive as long as you can. It's literally possible to make it to gold without even firing a single bullet. And if you happen to get some kills along the way, then you'll be having big point games. But seriously guys, if you just survive the initial 10 minutes of one of these bronze or silver lobbies, you'll often be in a position to get some serious RP because the teams that hot dropped will take each other out of the game. So to all my silver friends out there, keep practicing your mechanics, learning about the game, and being smart about your drops, and you'll find yourself in gold in no time. And if you're looking for an exclusive chance to learn tips even more advanced than these, then make sure to check out this message from TSM's own Imperial Howl. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Imperial Howl, and welcome to my brand new Apex class. This class goes over everything you need to move, shoot, and think like me. Whether you're silver or diamond, controller or keyboard, you're going to be the one carrying your friends. I typically can't get to all your comments, but this course is actually going to help you guys so much in all your questions. If you're serious about becoming a better Epic player, join me for the next 30 days and commit to improving. All right, guys, so moving into gold lobbies, this is where you've got to start taking your game to the next level. A lot of players you run into here are pretty good mechanically. It's going to be pretty rare that you get bailed out of a bad situation because enemies just whiff every shot. 
While these lobbies aren't just going to be full of b-hopping or tap strafing madmen, they are going to have their fundamentals pretty well down. And the same should go for you. All that time in the firing range and reps in your games should have you at a comfortable state with the game, where you're ready to start thinking about the game in a bit more of a complex way. And that tip we just talked about in silver is still important here. Hot drops are dangerous in gold and they're very popular in this elo. And players here are usually good enough that you'll have a hard time taking out more than one squad off drop unless you're not supposed to really be in gold. However, in this rank, depending on how late it is in the season, a lot less teams are going to be dying off spawn. And the mid to late games of these lobbies are a little bit more competitive. This is where you need to start having a bit of a game plan when you're entering your matches, beyond just your drop. It's obviously good to do this prior to gold elo, but this is where not having a plan will come back to bite you. Try to have a couple possible rotations in mind as you're dropping to your POI. Make sure to be free looking while dropping to map out where enemies are dropping nearby. Gold is where your decision making and movement on the map really starts to affect your RP gains. By losing 24 RP each game, you really want to try to shoot for top 10 if you're looking to rank up, and this gets tougher and tougher the higher elo you go. You'll notice in a lot of your gold lobbies with a lot less people dying off drop that the whole map is more populated and dangerous. This elo is really where you need to start having a good grasp on rotation not just moving mindlessly throughout the POIs with good loot. The timing and speed of your movement across the map begins to set you up for success or set you up for failure. Understanding where the dead side of the zone is and knowing how to effectively path across the map to reach power positions within the ring becomes a staple for your success in these games. All right, now we're moving into the fun stuff, talking about platinum. At this point, you're starting to get pretty dang good at the game, and the same goes for everybody else in the lobby. At this elo, every player is pretty comfortable with the game having solid mechanics all around. This is also where you're going to start to see a lot of advanced movement start to make its way into your games. While you don't necessarily have to have advanced movement in this elo, you don't want to be caught without it because you will get punished for it here. Being able to b-hop, wall bounce, tap strafe, and just overall use any movement in the game is one of the last mechanical humps that most players have to climb. And this is generally the elo that you want to make sure that's happening. A lot of plat players are very confident in their play and will attempt to capitalize on anything they see as an opening. This leads to a large percentage of the lobby being pretty aggressive. While they won't hot drop as much, they will look to loot fast, instantly rotate, and take any fights that seem nearby and third partyable. This is where you should do things a little bit differently. Most plat players get stuck here because they're honestly just too aggressive. Nearly every octane is good at W key. It's rare to see a team in lethal range and have them not instantly push you. And the thing is, most of the times, the teams in this elo are skilled enough to take out other squads in these scenarios. But since there's so many of these aggressive teams in the lobby, so many squads will go down from third parties. So where lower elo players lose to hot drops, Plat teams lose to the early mid game third parties. But every team isn't like this. There is a minority in each game that does play for the ring, rotates early, and only fights when they need to. And this is the type of squad that you want to be. If you could be as mechanically sound as those other teams padding on anyone they see, while also being smart about your rotations and playing to win the game rather than just taking fights, I promise you are going to be raking in the RP. The key here is to remember, you're not playing safe because you're scared or feel like you have to. It's more that your focus should be on staying alive, with you only using your well-practiced skills in combat when absolutely necessary or when the time comes. Because guys, let's face it, sometimes there's a third party that's too good to pass up. <laughs> so guys, to summarize Platinum, you need to avoid getting third partied and avoid those early to mid-game fights. That way, you can find yourself climbing out of Platinum in no time. All right, guys, now we're moving into the big dogs, Diamond. At this point, you're getting pretty high in the ladder. As you reach the top of Diamond, you'll have a lot of pretty good players in your lobby. So this is where every mistake you make can cost you. Did you miss a bunch of your easy shots? Are you over pushing a squad solo? Maybe you're being too greedy to try and third party a nearby fight outside of the ring. In this elo, you need to assume that every mistake you make in a game can and will get punished. Almost every player in these lobbies is capable of seeing your mistakes and capitalizing on them. So you need to limit your own mistakes and wait for them to give you windows to capitalize on. This is why there's such a heavy emphasis on rotations and ring placement. 
because if you're the one to be set up first, you have the freedom to watch for mispositioned enemies or mistakes and punish them for it. On top of this, your RP commitment is a whopping 48 per game. This is where getting top 5 and having as many shots at a win as possible is key. You can make it through basically every rank in the game without getting into the top 5 aside from diamond and above. As you reach these higher elos, you really need to be abusing that placement multiplier to get some big RP gains on the games that are going well for you. The bottom line is you are going to die early in a lot of these matches. So it's important to get high placements and even win a few of your games to have a shot at making it to the top of diamond and on to masters. All right, now we're going on to the top of the food chain, masters. In masters, you have a firm grasp on the necessary game knowledge to win games and have the mechanics to back it up. At this stage in your rank grind, you're competing against the best players on the server, trying to make it to that top 750 spot and claim Apex Predator. This is where you need to be analyzing every single death and really honing in on the small mistakes that lead you to losing. When you've reached this level, it's no longer about overarching gameplay approaches, but more about working on very specific weaknesses that you can identify learning more about the game from a decision-making level by having a ton of reps and learning a lot from those reps. Also in Masters, VOD reviewing is your best friend and you really need to keep a learning mentality if you truly want to join the elite top 750. If you're a really good player, it's pretty easy to make it to Masters and if you think your journey's over, think again. In reality, if you manage to make it here, this is where the real game begins. Suddenly, you're matching up with Predator players every game. These could be streamers, pro players, or even aspiring pros. These games are what you've been grinding for because now you have access to the most competitive matches that you could ever hope for and have more knowledge to gain off the players in your game than you ever have before. If you made it to Masters, then guys, I'll say it firmly, you're a great Apex player. But I personally want to see you become one of the best by hitting that Predator goal that I know you have. So guys, some final personal tips going from Masters to Pred. Honestly, it takes a lot of games. The people at the top, especially in Split 2, will get to like 30,000 plus RP. And that means you need to have a consistent squad you're playing with and win most of your games. You also need to put in a decent bit of time. But if you check all the boxes that I just said, you can make it to Apex Predator. So put the grind in. I have nothing but faith in you. So get it. Alrighty guys, every player has a different skill level in different parts of their game that have a hand in what rank they're able to achieve. And every single one of you guys watching this video can work on the areas that are holding you back and get better than you ever thought possible. Hopefully today helps shed some light on the common struggles that different ranks have. And you can use this knowledge to help you climb your way to the rank that you've been grinding for. Let me know in the comments down below what rank you wanna get to this season. Anyway, guys, my name's Invalued, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.